with me, with me, which I'm still trying to convince myself is legitimate. But <laughs> since I'm here and um, have been to other book release uh, parties uh, of friends of mine who uh, are out of touch right now, uh, and I know I know that it is. Uh, a moment that is is uh, can be a milestone in your life as a writer. I'm not a writer actually. I'm a poet. I thought of myself as a hedge poet until Derek published these things. <laughs> but apparently, some of them have a certain strength that I'm not willing to realize. I'm not willing to admit to. Um, we, he was sitting there in the uh, reading room at the Mythos Con in the um, Palm Court Hotel. And uh, I'm reading one after another of these things. I'm putting them over because I do dramatic reading. And you can save a mediocre poem with a dramatic reading the same way you can save a mediocre sketch with good shading. I don't know if people realize. Yes. So then Derek's sitting there and he says very quietly, The Old Tavern. And it happened to be my own favorite. Now Beethoven's favorite symphony was the A, ma a major, the seventh. And so every, every artist or composer has their own favorite opus. So that's, that's my favorite. I like the story poems because they preach. They preach a little bit. That's the open in the name of the king one. Pardon me? The open in the name of the king one. The old tavern. The old tavern, right, right. Yeah. He comes up riding up and I'm looking for the red fits you. Yeah. yeah. And then the little girl comes and her faces will all be smirched with tears. My daddy's gone now. Get the hens from off this place. They turn around and they say, ah, oh, screw this. He's not here. And they, and they just give up and go. Instead of going into the place and ransacking it, uh, I read this at Fistva a couple of years ago, when when John Boardman and Perdita were still with us. Um, but the the poems weren't written in, in one fell swoop. They 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 a lot of the ones that are quasi medievalist came from the period between 1968 and 1978 when I was active with the SCA, and you can tell. Uh, some of the names are made up, some of the names are not. Uh, there are, I tried to imitate the voice of Lovecraft, the voice of Robert E. Howard in Final Quest, uh, into the, this blade, my not blade I slide, for this will be the last road we will ride. Because they lost everybody else, got killed! And then these are the last two guys that are sitting on winded horses. Do we go on or not? Well, they're behind us and they're in front of us, so we really have a choice. Um, but the, um, there, there, are, there are some which um, are weaker than others in, because I, I taught myself a little bit of comparative prosody criticism, how to, how to read a poem. Because when I got the, uh, when Derek gave me the uh, Freedom of Fantastic Things and I saw ST's um, description of Clark Ashton Smith's poems in prose. I saw what he was doing, and I said to myself, why can't I figure out my own stuff that way? Uh, I taught myself a little bit of criticism. Instead of just filling up an apazine with natter, which really doesn't amount to much. And so I tried to write a, a, a better quality. Leigh Blackmore said, give him a, uh, give him a serious essay uh, and write about something you know. So I said, okay. And, 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 and gradually, it, it represents a stage of growth. But um, Derek saw this thing, and I had uh, not all of the poems, because I sent a lot of them to S.T. Joshi by, uh, by, by uh, computer, I said, you know, by email. And he insisted that they all have titles, so I <coughs> go argue with him. So I gave him titles. I figured out the titles of Father Knows His Children. I know what the poems should be called, because I wrote them. Uh, pe uh, people reading them are not always to figure it out. Uh, not always able to figure out why I use in, in certain titles that I did. But they, then they read the poem, and the poem carries it. You know, and it doesn't really matter what you call it. Read the one about the little stone. I like that. You like the little stone? <coughs> yes, dear. Oh. Well. Oh. The, you, will, you, will you hold still for this? Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Ah. As I sat neath a leafy bough one summer afternoon, the sun in radiant glory setting, waiting for the moon, I stared in contemplation at a weathered little stone that lay amid the verdant grasses, quiet and alone. 
And whither art thy brethren? Art thy brethren, I asked the little mite, as Helios drew across his face the purple veil of night. My brethren guard the valleys of a hundred mighty streams. We line the roads from Arcady to Ocean's land of dreams, mid verdure lush at twilight's hush in forest, field, and brook, with trailing ivy creepers to illuminate each nook. With measured satisfaction the little, the stony fragment spake, while round about the birds had stilled their piping in the break. The tomb of Baba Khan is carved with floral arabesque that Faisal cut with angel's touch at Savatla's behest. The statues of the heroes from Mar Varangia to Khand are carven from my brethren through the realms of Frankistan. The royal ones sleep peacefully beneath their painted tombs, bedecked with gold and faience in their painted treasure rooms. The Dorian hath his granite, the Roman porphyry, the Huns sleep on the rocky scarp of distant Tartary. The early Picts, their circled stones on Wiltshire's meadows raised, that they who followed might behold and be amazed. And when they finally lay to rest the great chief of the north, his cairn will keep him down so he will no get bounding forth. <laughs> oh, thanks to thee, thou little stone, I quote my thanks to thee. With what I prithee will they carve the stone that covers me? Oh, friend, replied the little stone, I surely am no seer, that my reed should foretell what men will scribe upon thy beer. But fill thy life with good works, and with greed and pride be done, and thou need never fear what time will write upon thy stone. I once played the ham in Hamlet. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to thank you all very much uh, for coming. I have been on a perpetual high since, since I met Ann Schwader at Nuflescon, my God. Um, and I, I, it was, more, it, it was a, more than just a major world-class regional conference. It was a family reunion, because we met people who, who have been here. Uh, Martin Anderson from Goldenborg, Sweden and uh, Juha Matarayala, and I guess how to pronounce his name. I guess, and he, he confirmed it. Uh, from uh, Lapenranta, Finland, he's now the provost of Lapenranta for the Order of the Drown Rat. And I got Bob Price. I got Steve Maraconda. <laughs> he didn't know what to do, so he genuflected. <laughs> I said, you don't have to do that. <laughs> I don't have to do that. John Lang, when I gave him the book, he bowed like this. Oh I said, no, it's, it's not like that. It's a fanish gig. If you're a fan, you understand it. And if you're not a fan, and somebody tells you, now you understand it. Um, but we, uh, we, I, I had never been so completely happy for, for the full length of the convention as I was. We went great, great walling, um, you know, breaking rice together. The guy sitting next to me was the um, uh, president. And, uh, ma and managing editor of uh, Miskatonic River Press in California. Uh, I find out that Ian Schwader is left-handed and, and she's allergic to pecans. So, so I said, watch out. Uh, but but uh, she, she, is, she is a poet second to none, when she, especially when she, she, she writes what they call them mythos poets, like, like a friend in Iowa, uh, Dick Tierney. And uh, Leigh Blackmore is a Lovecraftian poet, and I am. But, but I told Langan, my, my secret, when he came for the Poe thing at the gallery at uh, uh, South Street Seaport, I was waiting for you to come, so I was outside in the front, but I had written a sonnet, which is not in this book, but uh, I, I showed it to him. I read it to him, and I said, um, he went shopping, she left me in a Starbucks with a cup of coffee. I said, fine, I whipped out a pencil and paper. I felt, you know, it's like a sneeze, you can't stop it, it has to come out. You know, it's like a natural reaction. And, and it, it came out and I read the thing to him and I said I was making a reference to the, to the thing that was approaching that made the, the person telling the story in the first person uh, uh, 
anxious and afraid, but I didn't describe it. That was what Lovecraft used to do in his prose. 